Good morning, and welcome to Recruit Training Command at Naval Station Great Lakes, the quarterdeck of the Navy. I am Rear Admiral Craig Mattingly, Commander of Naval Service Training Command. I want to personally welcome you to our Navy family. What an exciting day. Family, friends, and shipmates, it is an honor to have you with us as we celebrate the graduation of our newest United States Navy sailors. It seems just like yesterday, I was graduating boot camp and it meant the world to me to have my family and friends sitting in the audience just like you. I wanna take a moment to thank you for playing a significant role in the lives of these sailors before you. Your support, your encouragement, and your love help them reach this time-honored tradition as we look upon these young women and men, we see a transformation that took place over the past several weeks. They endured rigorous physical and mental training, pushing themselves to their limits and beyond. They learned the importance of teamwork, of discipline, and of dedication. They have become a proud part of our tradition of service to our nation. Each of these new sailors will play a critical role in fulfilling our Navy's mission. They will be stationed around the world, serving on ships, on submarines and aircraft, protecting our nation and our allies. Your sailor will make a positive impact on the world. They will be ambassadors of our country, representing the best of what America has to offer. They will be leaders, they will be mentors, and they will be role models for others to follow. And as we celebrate this graduation, let us remember the sacrifices that were made to get us here. Let us honor the commitment and the dedication of these new sailors. And let us look forward to the bright future that lies ahead, knowing that our nation is in great hands. Thank you, thank you for playing a significant role in the lives of these recruits. And I warmly welcome you to our Navy family. Enjoy the ceremony and celebrate your sailor. Thank you.
We salute the states and territories whose sons and daughters will graduate today. Delaware. Georgia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maryland, South Carolina, New Hampshire, Virginia, New York, North Carolina, Vermont, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, Louisiana, Indiana, Mississippi, Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, Michigan, Florida, Texas, Iowa, Wisconsin, California,
Divisions. Counter. Mark.
Division Commanders, left or right, base, parade, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm Lieutenant Josh Jones, Recruit Training Command's Drill Division Officer. I would like to welcome you to today's pass and review. Today you will see five divisions comprised of 407 sailors participating in their graduation ceremony and soon to join the most powerful Navy in the world. Please draw your attention to the unit position at center deck. There is a review commander and staff. The review commander is responsible for conducting the graduation ceremony. Today's review commander is Seaman Recruit Michael Lopez from Louisville, Kentucky. Let's give him a hand, folks. Performing today is the Triple Threat Unit on their sixth week of training, the State Flags Unit on their seventh week of training, and the Staff Unit on their eighth week of training. These units are comprised entirely of recruits. During their night of arrival, recruits are placed into divisions of 80 personnel and assigned division commanders. Recruit division commanders form the backbone of recruit training and are key individuals in the life of every recruit. Division commanders must service counselors, disciplinarians, administrators, and military leaders. Above all, they must show themselves as outstanding examples of military bearing, appearance, attitude, and behavior. Each division also has a recruit chief headed officer. This senior recruit supervises the divisional staff positions and leads the division in the absence of their division commanders. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the graduating divisions, their division commanders, and recruit chief headed officers. As I introduce each division, they will raise the competitive flags that they have earned throughout their training. As I introduce each recruit chief petty officer, the flag representing their home state will also be raised. Please hold your applause until all introductions have been completed. I will be starting from there right. Division one, six, three. Commanded by Petty Officer First Class, Catherine Fleming. Petty Officer First Class, Zachary Swanson. Petty Officer First Class, Cody Mahoney. And the Recruit Chief Petty Officer, Fireman Tyler Smithson of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Division one, six, four. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer, Philip Brown. Petty Officer First Class, Isaiah Covington. Petty Officer Second Class, Brian Burkett. And the Recruit Chief Petty Officer, Airman Apprentice Hayden Baxter from Big Ben, Wisconsin. Division One, Six, Five. Commanded by Petty Officer First Class, Jocelyn Downey. Petty Officer First Class, Jacqueline Bainbridge. Petty Officer First Class, David Martinez. And the Recruit Chief Petty Officer, Airman Apprentice Hunter Johnson from Memphis, Tennessee. Division One, Six, Seven. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Kyle McDonough. Petty Officer First Class, Alexis Gray. Petty Officer First Class, George Villadalos. And the Recruit Chief Petty Officer, Seaman Topele Matoka from Pago Pago, American Samoa. Division 1, 6, 8. Commanded by Master Chief Petty Officer, David Leonard. Chief Petty Officer David Wilson. Petty Officer First Class Tashik Jennings. And the Recruit Chief Petty Officer, Airman Apprentice Zariah Robinson from Houston, Texas. On behalf of the Commanding Officer and Staff of Recruit Training Command, we congratulate these Division Commanders and Recruit Chief Petty Officers on a job well done.
In a moment, you will see the ceremonial sideboards, boats, and honor guard take their places for arrival honors. This time honor tradition is our formal greeting to this morning's recruiting officer. When requested by the announcer, please stand for the arrival honors, marching on the colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. As a reminder, military guests shall remain covered throughout the entire graduation ceremony. And ladies and gentlemen, one final note. As we fit in the importance of this occasion, our ceremony is conducted in a formal manner. However, we do encourage you to participate in today's graduation ceremony by letting your applause show these sailors just how proud of them you are. Once again, welcome aboard. Deputy Chief of Staff, U.S. Pacific Fleet, arrive. The guests may be seated.
present art. Chaplain Drayton will offer this morning's invocation. Good morning. Before I pray, I ask one question. If a bully confronted you and threatened to take that which was most important to you, who would you turn to? Let us pray. Our Lord, our God, that question is why we are here. To instill these here men and women who rise to be counted with those who stand up against bullies, injustice, and tyranny around the world. It is their enduring posture, perseverance, courage, and character that we celebrate now. Through these last 10 weeks, every obstacle, every formation, every long night, every watch stood, every short phone call home, and every shot fired, and every question answered, they have proven themselves worthy of the name United States Navy Sailor. Without them, where would America be? Without them, what would America be? They are our coveted 1% make up what is the greatest naval fighting force in the history of our world, and it is you, Lord, and all veterans before them that we owe our future, our freedom, and our livelihood. 
for every family member, friend, and mentor, for every RDC instructor and staff who made today possible, thank you. May pride well up from within us. May we always practice justice, love mercy, walk humbly, and may we never forget the significance of today. It is through your glory we endure. Amen.
Award winners reporting, sir. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to your Navy quarterback. I'm Captain Ken Frober, Commanding Officer, Recruit Training Command. I'd like to welcome our family and friends attending recruit graduation here today and those watching live from around the world. Joining us today is our new officer, Captain Jeffrey Miller, Deputy Chief of Staff, United States Pacific Fleet. I would also like to acknowledge additional staff from our fleet sponsor, U.S. Pacific Fleet, sponsor Division 167. Our fleet sponsor program allows recruits to connect with sailors from Navy commands from around the world for valuable night training motivation while here at RTC. I would also like to welcome all our veterans here today. Thank you for your service to our country. Would all our veterans please rise so we can give you a round of applause. Thank you for your service to our country. The staff of Recruit Training Command is committed to providing the United States Navy basic to train physically fit and smart and disciplined sailors, such as those standing before you here today. These sailors have successfully completed 10 rigorous weeks of training and earned the right to wear the uniform recognizing symbol of freedom around the world. I would also like to take a moment to welcome you, your Navy family and friends, to your new Navy family as you reconnect with your sailor in a moment and navigate your new journey together. We invite you to learn more about your Navy family resources here in Great Lakes and around the world. Search the internet for Navy Boot Camp Navy Family to learn more about your new Navy family from our command website. <coughs> Today's graduates will serve as the bedrock of American Naval Forces and will join other sailors around the world to defend freedom and liberty from those who are threatened. I can say with pride this training group is ready to graduate. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. I present to you 407 of the newest, sharpest sailors in the United States Navy. Division one, six, three, has earned this honor today, and we congratulate them on a job exceptionally well done. <laughs> Captain Miller will now present this week's individual awards, and he will be joined on the drill deck by our commanding officer, Captain Frober.
for achieving the highest overall academic score during recruit training, Seaman Bonnie Sandoval Sanchez, Division 165, San Diego, California. Seaman Sandoval Sanchez received a letter of accommodation from the commanding officer. Well done, sailor. for having displayed extraordinary qualities best expressing the American spirit of honor, initiative, and loyalty, Airman Apprentice Sandra Angelica Castillo, Division 167, from Ribbon, California, is awarded the Navy League Award, which is sponsored by the Navy League of the United States. Airman Apprentice Castillo is presented with a commemorative plaque and a letter of accommodation from the commanding officer. Well done, sailor. Seaman Benjamin Baldy, Division 167, from Rancho Cordova, California, is the winner of the United Service Organizations Award for Best Exemplifying the Spirit and Intent of a Word Shipmate. Seaman Baldy is given a commemorative plaque from the United Service Organizations. Well done, Sailor.
Thank you, sir. something truly stupid. And if you didn't notice, I tripped coming up the stairs. Some of you might think I planned that, but I didn't. But I will say, I'm probably the most graceful person you've ever seen fall up the stairs. Hey, good morning. Good morning to one and all, to all the distinguished guests, the family and friends that came here. I know it's already been said. I also want to say good morning and thank you very much for the family and friends that could not make the trip but are here in spirit. Let me tell you what is very important to sailors is being supported by our family and friends, even if they're not here, in person or in spirit. That means so much to us, so I just want to say thank you. He told you when I came in, so you know it's one of the greatest honors of my life to be here. I started here, and that's the last thing I'm going to say about myself, because it's not about me. It's about you. I want to welcome these sailors to the finest fleet in the world. I, I take that back. I shouldn't have said the finest fleet in the world. I should have said the greatest navy in the history of humankind. Hoorah! Welcome, sailors. I mean, Now before I start, before I really start, I'm going to ask once again for all the active duty service members that are in the audience to please stand. No, 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 no apology. Now I'm also going to ask if able, any veterans, if you could please stand and if you're not able, please raise your hand so we know who you are. Now, Now, can you stand there, please, just for one moment? I want you to look at these sailors in front of you. I want you to look at the greatness. Look at the future of our Navy. Look at the future of the armed forces of the United States. Look at the future of our country. Before you stands greatness, everything that is awesome 
about the United States of America, and I'm going to ask my brother in the armed forces, doesn't that future look grand? Hoorah! Let's give another round of applause to our future. Man, there's only one thing better than a Navy sailor, and that's two Navy sailors. Sailors, the best part of this, this is where I'm getting down to business. This is about you, and this is about me and you, because we are now shipmates. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. I learned a long time ago, when you talk to sailors, you've got to be succinct. You've got to be sincere. And you have to be as candid as you possibly can be, and you've got to be short. Because sailors are very, very busy people. They always got something to do, and someplace they've got to be. And the more I talk, the less you're going to listen. And sailors don't have time for fluff, the pontifications of praise. They are sincere in their actions. So I'm going to get right to it. Congratulations. Congratulations, people who came. You are now the icons of liberty. You are champions of democracy. You are now symbols of hope and freedom throughout the globe. You as an American sailor, just your presence alone in a crowd of people will inspire others to be better humans. You will strive them. You will inspire them. You will make them better in everything they do, just by being in the city. When other people in other countries and foreign lands, when they think of America, they think of you. They think of you. Your image is ingrained in their brain. Your face is in their heart and soul. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about the organization that you have joined. And I know you receive tons of training on it. But I have a little bit of experience in the Navy, and I seem to, I love it. This organization that you join is a global force. No other armed force in the world can project power like we do. We have people that influence every continent. We have the power, the influence, to touch every human being on the earth. That's your Navy. Because we are forward deployed and we're always out there doing what's right, we have that influence. We have the ability, if the government gives us a 30 minute heads up, we can kill a polar bear on the North Pole and a penguin on the South Pole at the same exact time, simultaneously. Now, we don't want to kill no polar bears. I think everybody loved those commercials that they do during the holiday seasons of Coca-Cola. And I don't want to kill a penguin. They're so sharply dressed. They look as almost as sharp as a sailor in their whites. Have you ever noticed when you guys stand in direct sunlight, you give off an angelic glow? Have you noticed that? There's a reason for that, that angelic glow. But I digress. I'm talking about the Navy. Our ability to have that global reach to strike at the North Pole and the South Pole has means one thing. We are always there, and we're always ready, and we will answer the call we call upon. Natural disasters like hurricanes, tsunamis, earthquakes, we're there. We're there for the world. Or worse, when some communist dictator or some despot tries to disrupt or destroy peace and security in the region or globally, we're there. We are always there to answer the call. Other countries like China and Russia, when they deploy their aircraft carriers, they deploy them with 10 to 20 aircraft. 10 to 20 aircraft. When your Navy deploys our aircraft carriers, we deploy up to 74 to 76 aircraft. And oh, by the way, the standard is to launch every single one of those within 30 seconds of one another and recover them every minute 30. 10 to 20 aircraft. Ha! When they deploy their submarines, we know when they leave port to the moment they come back to port. Our submarines, even if we're courteous and we tell them exactly where our submarines are, they still can't find them. 
Just one of our destroyers, one of our surface combatants, they can track and detect and neutralize more of the threats than any four of theirs combined. We can even shoot down ballistic missiles while they're in space. But we're worried about that. This is your name. This is our name. Now, some people think that we can do this because we have a technological advantage over our adversaries. I'm telling you that's not true. They think our equipment is better. I'm telling you that's not true either. What makes a difference is because of sailors like you. You are the greatest weapon the Navy has, and don't you forget it. You're sharp, you're focused, and when need be, you're surgical, you're thorough, and you're perfect in everything you do. I need to ask a favor of you, and I'll give you a hint. When a captain in the Navy says, I need to ask a favor, it's a lawful order. So listen, and listen close, because I'm only going to say this once. I need for you to be better today than you were yesterday. And I need you to wake up every single morning with that attitude. For that is the only way that our Navy is going to continue to improve and be the premier force in the world. I need you to have compassion. Compassion for your shipmates and for yourselves. So your sacrifices at sea will be a beacon for all those to follow. I need you to appreciate human life. So your duty as you protect our country and the civilians of the world will have meaning in your heart and soul. And when required, I need you to be decisive and I need you to be diligent. When dealing with our adversaries, especially when we ever get in conflict with our enemies, the enemies of the United States, for it is our sacred duty, our sacred duty, to educate them and the rest of the world, it is moronic, idiotic, and just plain stupid to mess with the U.S. of A. Yeah, I heard a hope you say that. You also say you know what? You know, I think what that means. Ah, love it. Hey, sailors, I can tell you you're going to embark on the best adventures of your entire life. You've accomplished a lot, you ought to be proud. But the sailorization process, it just started. A year from now, this is the truth, this is the gospel. A year from now, you're actually gonna hold your head a little higher. You're gonna, chest is gonna stick out a little more. You're not gonna walk anymore, you're gonna stroll, or you're gonna have a swagger when you enter a room. When you get to that, that command, when you get to the ship or the squadron or the battalion, and you're starting being part of the team and becoming a shipmate, you're going to know what it's what like to be a, a sailor. And you're going to know a whole new level of pride. This is what sailors do. They make the hard look easy. The difficult, it gets done first. In the impossible, well, to a sailor, that ain't but a thing but a chicken wing. Matter of fact, a year from now, you might cross your arms a little bit like this, lean back a little bit, tilt your head, go to your commanding officer and say, Sir, what's next? Bring it. You're an American sailor. I can't wait to see what you become a year from now. I wish you well. I wish all of you well as friends, but more importantly as shipmates. I know from this day forward, you will always represent, represent the Navy and the country. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your attentions. And hoorah.
Captain Miller will now receive the salute of the graduating divisions, and he will be joined on the drill deck by our commanding officer, Captain Froberg. Please remain seated until your graduates have been placed on liberty. Section leaders fall out and retrieve outer garments.
gentlemen, today is the only day for access to the Navy Exchange and photo pickup. Today and tomorrow, you can pick up your sailor at the Yorktown parking garage. Sailors going on Liberty without a vehicle are to exit gate 8 toward the train station parking lot. Naturalization sailors, please report to the chapel at the conclusion of today's ceremony with your families for the naturalization ceremony. If your sailor is reported to Naval Station Great Lakes for follow-on training, you will experience some waiting as your sailor checks in. As you wait, the National Museum of the American Sailor welcomes your visit. It is conveniently located just past the main gate of Naval Station Great Lakes, with plenty of parking, free admission, and a helpful and friendly staff. Thanks again to each and every one of you for joining us on this most memorable of Navy days. And without further delay, now hear this. Liberty